start of it, start of it, start of it, run, read a comic, twist her hella sick, hella whacking it, take a bad hit, take a bad shit, start of it, start of Yeah, but Electro likes to get screwed in the butt. Hey, what's up you guys, Shardimus Prime here, doing another Mini Mates figure review on actually four different sets of Tomb Raider 2 packs. This review is brought to you by Diamond Select Toys, big thanks, check them out, link is in the description below for their YouTube channel, DST Zach's constantly posting up videos showing what's new coming from DST. And if you're trying to pick up these figures, you can find them at Toys R Us, your local comic book shop, or Big, 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 get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com, click the link in the description below. So to briefly go over the four different packs we have over here, we have two Toys R Us exclusives. This one right here is the Tomb Raider Stormguard and the Tomb Raider Stormguard Stalker. And then this one is the Battle Damage Laura Croft, Armored Tomb Raider Scavenger. We have regular Laura Croft, Tomb Raider Scavenger Scout. And then the other TRU exclusive is the Tomb Raider Scavenger and Tomb Raider Scavenger Archer. And on the back of the packaging on each of these over here, uh, you see all four sets of the figures over there. And then we get these little bios on each of them. So here's a bio on the Tomb Raider Stormguard, Battle Damage Laura Croft, and the Armored Raider Scavenger, Laura Croft and the Tomb Raider Scavenger Scout, and the Tomb Raider Scavengers. I'll briefly describe what the bios say throughout the review, but if you want to go ahead and read them, you can go back and pause accordingly. But other than that, let's get to it and crack these figures open. So I want to start off with the regular Laura Croft figure over here and the Tomb Raider Scavenger Scout. Both look great and they have a lot of accessories. Actually, Laura Croft comes with a lot of accessories. Uh, the bio basically explains how the uh, Scavenger Scout right here just uses the Molotov cocktail and then Laura Croft explains how she's a trust fund baby and she has a bunch of weapons so you can see that she has this torch over here which looks great. I love this translucent orange plastic that they used on both of these so really good flame effects on here. I think that's awesome and it's kind of tricky to see but there are some lines right here sculpted in this little piece of wood. I think that's great and look at the curves on this woman. She is so Fine. That's kind of funny to me because it's just the block over here, but you know, Laura Croft, man, and nice drawn on lines over here and everything, capturing the details that's supposed to be on there. I think it's really cool. You know, Mini Mates are just deceptively complex figures to me. They look so simple, but they actually have a lot of detail in them. Like, I really like how the hair is sculpted on this figure. It looks great, man. I think this is great. Now, she also comes with a two-way radio over here. You can see how tiny that is, this little two-way radio. And she also comes with a bow and two arrows over here, and then it has this little clip right here where you could rest the arrow. I like the detail in this bow, though. It's got a lot of little notches sculpted in it. it looks pretty good. Then here's the two little arrows right here, one of them slightly bent. And then she comes with her infamous pry axe over here. That looks great. So I think this is a makeshift version of the axe actually, so it looks a little ruggedy like it's been taped around and stuff. I think that's very, very cool. And I gotta say the Scavenger Scout looks very, very impressive. I mean, aside from the flame effect, I really like all these bandages over here from his burns, which are explained in the little bio. He's got this two-faced kind of look going on over here. You got the goggles and everything. Nice sculpted detail. He has some extra Molotov cocktails at the ready over here. Looks great. And both of these figures come with their own clear stand, by the way. And they have peg holes at the bottom of their feet. I didn't mention that earlier. And then both of them, you can remove the hair. I just want to show how you can remove the head on this guy over here. And then he actually has a shirt underneath this vest thingy. And then there you go. You got the shirt right there. It looks like it's a little charred. And you have that charred right there on his arms right there and right there. Now these being mini mates, the articulation on all of them is more or less exactly the same. So I'm just going to go over the articulation on Laura Croft over here. The heads move side to side. and you you can move them forward and back. They're on a ball peg, so you can get some neck pivot on them too. They have shoulders that move outward that may pop off, but they can rotate forward as well. And you can turn them side to side a little bit. They have elbows that bend in at 90 degrees, wrist rotation, uh, waist joint right over here. And then the legs can barely move outward a little bit, but you know, because they're on ball pegs also, you can kind of shimmy that around if you wish. And you can get them to kick forward and just a little bit of a wiggle room right over here too. And then she has a single jointed knee and ankles move side to side. And for the second two pack, we have the battle damaged Laura Croft and the armored Tomb Raider Scavenger. And the story behind this is that Laura Croft's ship was ran aground and then she was captured by the island's inhabitants and had to escape and she had to fight off these Tomb Raider Scavengers that are fully armored over here. And she was wounded in rescuing her friend Sam Samantha. She does come with three accessories. She has these two rifles over here, and I guess this is supposed to be stored in this little holster. I'm not sure if that's what it's for exactly. And then she has the 
this shotgun over here that has some nice silver paint applications. It looks awesome. And it's basically the same figure as before. I just want to take all of these off. But she does have this added strap going across right over here. So that's pretty nice. And the strap does have a peg sticking out of it. And there are peg holes in these two rifles over here. So you can just plug this in like so. And then she could store the gun right there on her back. And that looks pretty neat. Just adjust the hair a little bit. Yeah, it looks good. And she does have different paint applications. Of course, you can see that she does have some mud in her hair. Uh, I hope that's mud in her hair over there. Then you have some like some mud right there on her arm and a bandage right there. And some nice blood just painted on there. It looks pretty good. She has this new holster and some straps around her legs. And that looks like it's pretty painful. I don't know why, but on this particular figure, there seems to be some glitter on it. Some very, very little glitter. She's got that stripper glitter going on. Not that I know anything about strippers. Nor have I ever been to a strip club. Just the once. Or twice. Or every year. Then here's the Armored Tomb Raider Scavenger, which looks awesome. Look at all these paint applications. I think this is great. A lot of nice sculpting. I like all these little pouches around over here. All these bandages and stuff. I like this gunmetal paint that we have over here. His little shield is great too. His right gear shield. This is awesome. You can see the rope going across it. That looks great. I like how it's all tattered and beaten up and stuff. You can see all these little bolts sculpted in there and everything. That is cool, man. He's got this mask going on. I just really like the details in this, you know. And all of them come with their own little stand. I didn't mention that earlier, but yeah. So, there's that. Looks really cool. Now, you can remove this mask, and there you go. He's got a face underneath there. And you can remove his head and pop this off over here to re reveal that he has a shirt underneath. So, I think that's really cool. I love that they put that attention to detail in these little figures. And the bio behind the Tomb Raider scavengers is basically that they're worshippers of the Sun Queen and that they've built cities out of wrecked planes and ships. Now this archer over here I think looks great. He does have limited articulation though, uh, just due to this hood and everything. You can't really turn the whole head around. And also because of this quiver, uh, there's his little clear stand and he has this really cool looking bow. I think this is a compound bow I believe, but look at the sculpting on this. This is great. This looks awesome. And he comes with three arrows, so he's holding this one right over here and all three of them are the same and the, here's the second one over here and then I put this last one over here now this quiver can actually hold at least one of the arrows I tried putting two in there I don't recommend trying to shove more than one into this because I think it can break so it could just only really fit one comfortably and then here's the detail right here on the quiver that looks great and here's a sleeping bag right there attached to the back some nice silver paint applications over here nice mud and dirt and the bandages look awesome a lot of nice detail on this. Look at that vest. It looks pretty cool. And here's the hoodie. Then he has this mask thing going on. His face is all covered up. And then you can, again, remove the head on this and then lift this vest up. And whoa, he's buffed. Wow. And then here's the Tomb Raider Scavenger. Again, nice bandage detail over here. I really like the sculpting on these figures a lot. Look at the backpack, man. That's a lot of detail for just a little backpack. Little pouches right here hanging off on the side. This is cool. He has this little holster over here for his machete. So you can take the machete and you can just shove it right in here if you don't want him holding it. And that works out pretty well. Looks very cool. Look at that. Now you can remove the hair and the goggles together and you get the eyes with the mask right there. He's got his little ninja mask going on. Then you can pop the head off. I like removing all the all the heads on these and then seeing how they look and let's see if we can actually you have to pop the arms off you want to remove the backpack and everything on here so let's see how this works out wow this looks actually complicated I don't really think you're supposed to be removing all of this but you can see he's got muscles and mud on there and here are the last two figures that I'll be looking at today we have the Tomb Raider Storm Guard and the Tomb Raider Storm Guard Stalker both of which look very cool. Now they're on an island of Yamatai and they get possessed by the Sun Queen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Yamatai? I don't know, but it's it's off of Japan. So it's an island just off of Japan and that's why they have this samurai look to them. And I think they look great. Now they're supposed to be possessed by the Sun Queen. I think that's why they look like monsters, I guess. That's how that happens. But looking at this guy first, I think it looks really cool. I love these gold paint applications and all the details in the sculpting, man. Look at this. This is impressive. Wow. And that's a dog barking. I like the helmet. Really like how this looks. And you can take the helmet off and blah, 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 blah. it looks a little monster. These can go actually pretty well with my battle beasts almost. But look at all the detail right over here. 
This is great. Now this guy is a little bit more limited in articulation as far as bending the elbows and ankle rotation. So I have to just mention that, but this looks really cool. And here's the Stormguard Stalker, which even looks cooler, man. Look at that. Even this little piece has all these little details etched in there in the plastic. This is really cool. I removed this torso piece over here and there's nothing underneath at all. So that's just basically how he looks. He has his chest muscles and everything just drawn on there. And same kind of deal with the limited articulation. You can't really rotate the ankles very much. And then just only this right elbow is kind of hard to bend to this plating right over here. But this one's just fine. This is awesome. You can remove the helmet. Ooh, it's creepy looking. Ah, oh, that's awesome. I really think that's great. And this helmet is so sick. Again, loving these gold paint applications and the sculpting on this. It's just really, really cool. Nice detail right here in the blade. I like how they're both gold blades, and this one has a bunch of notches in it. I didn't really take too much of a look at this one over here, but this one's just all smooth and clean. Very nice looking figures. So I think this is a great assortment of figures. I think these are really, really cool. They all come with really cool accessories. The paint sculpt on them is immaculate. I mean, they are mini-mates. They are deceptively complex. They look very, very simple, but no, they are actually full on well detailed figures. I really like them a lot. I totally recommend them, especially if you're a huge Tomb Raider fan. I think they look really, really cool. I hope you guys liked my video. Please check out toynewseye.com for the latest in action figure news and a photo gallery of images. Hit the like button if you like the video. Leave a comment and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. say this is an I have to say this is a very I gotta say this is a very